Hi, I'm your host, Didi Che. Audio Builders TV presents Why Guitar Players Should Care About Electronics. This is a multi-part series presented by John Snyder. John is a PhD student at Boston University and is the owner and chief engineer of Electronic Audio Experiments, a small batch manufacturer of stomp boxes and tube amps. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Hi everyone, I'm John Snyder from Electronic Audio Experiments, and today I will continue to talk about how electronics impacts the regular guitar player. Last time we spoke about some of the things you can do with resistors and voltage sources, uh, the way that sources and loads impact one another, building on what we were talking about before with Ohm's Law. Today I'm going to get into the juicy stuff, amplification. So when you're building an amplifier, what is it really doing? It's taking a small input signal and it's making a big output signal. Turns out, this takes a lot of work to get right. A really cool circuit that we have, uh, an integrated circuit in fact, is called an operational amplifier, or op amp. It's made out of tiny transistors, sometimes even hundreds of them. Uh, and the beauty of all these tiny transistors working together is that you can get a very useful amplifier with just a couple of parts. And you can find these anywhere. They're in guitar pedals, they're in mixing consoles, they're in guitar amps. Uh, you can even find them in the sound card of your computer. Uh, as you can see, a classic op amp, this is the UA741, which is a very old design, already has a couple dozen transistors in it. There's a lot going on here, but the things you can do with op amps are in fact quite simple. So we have some basic op amp building blocks. Um, as you can see, the thing they all have in common is uh, the op amp and a couple of external components in order to make it do what we want to. The simplest one, though, doesn't even require those external components. This is what we call a buffer. If you connect the output of an op amp to the inverting input, which is indicated by a minus sign, you get something that replicates the output voltage uh, or the input voltage of whatever you put into it. Um, if you remember what we were talking about last time, this, this device has what we call a very, very low output impedance. Uh, this R source of it is very, very low, which means that it can also drive a very small load. Uh, it's very effective for something like a long cable. We also have what we call the non-inverting amplifier. The non-inverting amplifier uh, is in the bottom right-hand corner. The feedback is, again, uh, connected from the output to the minus input. Um, this feedback is what allows us to have a very stable gain relationship. And the gain, uh, which we specify with AV, is just 1 plus R1 over R2. So you can set the ratio of those resistors in order to get the exact gain that you want. In fact, we'll see how this is put into practice in a later segment. And finally, we have the inverting amplifier. So you have this RF and RN, and the gain is just uh, minus RF over RN. Um, this is a very simple device. Again, you only have two resistors. The reason we call it inverting is because the output signal uh, has negative gain. And what does that really mean? It means if you take a signal uh, and it goes in and it's sort of oscillating up and down one way, it's still going to be oscillating up and down. It's just that when it went up before, it's going to be down instead. Uh, this is touching on something that we call phase, which we're going to get into in a later segment. Uh, as you can see here, a whole bunch of stuff can be done with just an op amp and some other parts. Uh, but you can really build up a very complicated system by putting all these together. Thanks for watching Audio Builders TV. I'm John Snyder.